guys so come back with me don't forget to like comment share and subscribe so i would like to read an article from Dolly double rp tennis party lawyers lawyers minority team workers rights minority team workers rights our lawyer at Dolly double rp will help you understand your minority team workers rights minority team workers are trying some basics like for compensation after on the job injuries some of the most relevant rights and acts are listed below this only serves as a brief guide to get an extensive review and explanation of your relevant rights please contact an experienced maritime attorney maintenance and cure is provided to don't egg seamen injured while working on vessels Maintains provides daily living expenses that would have been incurred while working aboard a vessel. Your covers medical costs, which include appointments, operations, medicine, rehabilitation, and other necessary experience to help you recover from your injury. Both maintains and cure are required to be provided by employers, regardless regardless of who is at fault for an injury. Further information can be found on our Jones Act page. The Jones Act is a federal statute, statute that protects seamen who are injured while working on a vessel and certain offshore installation. It provides guaranteed benefits regardless of fault. Damage are available if a cause of the injury was negligence by an employer. Vessel owner or third party click here the Longshore and Harbor Workers Compensation Act protects maritime employees working in areas such as harbor, base, docks, port, shipyard workers, and fixed platforms, including offshore platforms. LHWCA is a federal workers' compensation program that provides benefits and compensation when these employees are injured on the job. The image may be recovered in cases of negligence, ne negligence under certain circumsta circumstances. The Death on the High Seas Act permits recovery of damage when a seaman that is caused caused by neckland neck neck street liability or wrongful act in waters three nautical miles of the shore of the United States. The supposed children and other dependents of a seaman killed may be able to sue the vessel or responsible person. Compensation for the act includes Pecuniary damage which account for lost wage, future wage, and certain expenses. Damage may be available in cases of negligence. Contributory negligence of the descendant is not a bar to recovery, but the court will consider the decree by the descendant and reduce the recovery accordingly. The Outer Continental Self Lines Act, OSCLA. Protects workers' injury, for example, while extracting and processing all and natural gas on outer continental shelf. The Act extends the Longshore and Harbor Workers' Compensation Act to the outer continental shelf and includes benefits for medical, with the expenses, and more. The Defense Space Act extended coverage of the Longshore and Harbor Workers' Compensation Act to civilians who are injured working on American military bases overseas. Workers covered also include civilians providing support and defense to America and its allies abroad. It covers American and international citizens. The Act provides for medical care, lost wages, and other benefits. See work illness, see work illness, who leads to requirements of having a properly put pregnant. The vessel owner must ensure the vessel operates correctly, has the right equipment and a crew that is properly trained. Seaworthiness does not only mean the vessel can navigate, but it has to be properly equipped 
with supplies and a crew that are reasonably fit for the voyage. If a vessel is not seaworthy and an accident arises because of it, the vessel owner may be held liable. The Safe and Admiralty Act allows claims against the United States government mer mer merchant vessels. A plaintiff or, or, or their family can recover compensation for injuries or a death caused by the negligence of the government merchant vessel. The Admiralty Exemption Act extends protection to a person or property on land that was injured or damaged by a vessel or navigable waters. This act covers bridge, docks, and other property that come into proximity with vessels while they are in water. The act also covers workers injured while loading and unloading vessels. The Public Vessels Act authorities people to sue the U.S. government and they are responsible for damage caused by the government vessel. These vessels include public, tran public transportation, rescue vessels, and marine and wildlife conservation vessels. The Limitation of Liability Act was passed in to protect, in to protect the fledgling American shipping industry from foreign competition. The Act allows vessel owners to limit liability claims after an accident if they can show the vessel owner did not previously know of the neglects or unseaworthiness of the vessel. But currently, vessel owners still like to invoke this Act. The Limitation of Liability Act can be a significant hurdle to recovery against a vessel owner. As such, it is important to have experienced maritime attorneys that know how to navigate through and around its limitation. The Non-Appropriated Fund Instrumentalities Act extend the Longshore and Harbor Workers Compensation Act to civilian employees of the armed forces in position funded by non-appropriated funds. Non-appropriated funds come from the sale of goods or service on the military, civilian personnel of the military and their family members. The Act covers goods and services that provide moral welfare and recreation programs. An injured maritime worker has the right to file a negligence suit against a responsibility party. The Jones Act allows for an injured seaman that was hurt on the job due to the negligence of a co-worker or employer to sue for damage. A negligence claim can be pursued against the owner of a vessel if an injury occurred on board due to the neglect of the seaworthiness of the vessel. A third party suit may be pursued if an injury occurs due to negligence of a third party. This could be a nearby company equipment and a factor that causes you to be hurt while working. To discuss your maritime workers' rights and potential claim, feel free to contact the maritime authorities at all out of the trial layer. Yes, maybe that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you.